All right, hello. Welcome to Adventures in Lollygagging. Uh, we are playing One Ring 2nd Edition tonight. Uh, the players are currently hastily figuring out their uh, their leveling up because uh, we got we're in the fellowship phase tonight. Uh, we see a couple folks are in the channel already. Thank you, uh, thank you, Aaron, for the sub. We really appreciate it. And I also wonder why Arizona shipments are so far behind California. I I really want my physical copy of the One Ring, but uh, it'll happen. It's gonna come. Uh, patience is a virtue. Is it? I think you guys were looking at the virtues, so hopefully there's patience in there somewhere. So, yeah. really, that's a stupid joke. That's a, <laughs> that's a stupid joke. But I said it nonetheless. Uh, but yeah, um, really looking forward. Uh, really looking forward to playing more of this, digging into it. We had a crazy end to our last session, uh, to the first adventuring phase we ever engaged in. Um, I hope you guys had fun. I wanted it to be fairly intense uh, as a as a crazy end, but. Uh, it was a good oh, yeah, combination we're... of, oh my gosh, I'm really, really scared. And, oh my gosh, while well, I point and laugh at Floyd running. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I, rem I, I, I realized like I was listening back to some of it here and there and I really like there was this one part where Melissa actually thinks about leaving um, Talendil behind. Uh, and I was just like, Wow that's pretty crazy. Like you, I didn't, I didn't really catch it at the time. Cause I, I had a couple other things until later I figured it out, but uh talent deal being one of your new ranger allies. Also you're a ranger and you thought that, which I thought was pretty interesting. Um, so anyway, that was kind of cool. Preservation at its worst. Yeah. Um, or best, you know, plus, I mean, there's a lot of things we get to dig into tonight, uh, which is cool. Uh, cause like the, the fellowship phase is, so, so the way one ring works is like like there's sort of like a downtime component and we're going to start with that and then eventually we're going to dive into like proper play but um but yeah before we um yeah before we we get started uh a couple plugs ashley what are we playing in tonight again we are playing the darkest house he said love... he's laughing because i'm reading <laughs> yeah i know i like to, I, li I like catching you know i like catching people uh yeah so you can catch us after this like i have a triple header i already played melissa and i already playing a game this morning and then ashley and i are playing a game later uh melissa so and i I'm are gonna... high-fiving and swapping out in this game like that's how it goes <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah she's like you're in and i'm like got it sweet <laughs> <laughs> so yeah later tonight over on defenders of cobalt you can catch uh ashley and i as we play through darkest house which is like a, a modern day kind of stephen kingish like uh a horror setting so that's kind of fun um, with our buddies over there. And then on Monday, you can come back, catch me and Melissa playing in ultraviolet grasslands, uh, next Friday, Delta green, impossible landscapes. I won't spoil anything. Cause there might be people in the channel who watch the Delta green game, but that was an intense episode last night. It was like, it was meandering at first. And then it just got like, Holy crap. Like it was just like, people were, were lost. And then we ended with a bang. The decision was made literally we with, ended with several of them with several bangs. Um, and then, yeah, and then Saturdays we'll be doing this, uh, and also, uh, check out the YouTube channel. So for those of you, if you're, if you're in the channel now, uh, or if you're happening to catch this on YouTube, uh, but we have another game that we started up just this past week called Deadlands using the Savage World of Venture Edition. Uh, you should go check that out. A lot of fun. Uh, it's wacky. It's crazy. It's definitely different than wondering, uh, but uh, it's still a lot of fun. Uh, it's still a lot of fun. Yeah. I like playing different games. I love playing different games. Uh, Okay. Uh, so why don't we do a little intro of character, uh, and I'll let you guys kind of introduce yourselves. I can get a few things set up and then we'll dive into a uh, fellowship phase. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think we're going to start, uh, I think we're going to start with, uh, you need me, you know, Melissa, Arineal, go ahead. <laughs> so playing Arineal, uh, she is a ranger of the North champion, um, she did, in fact, do the math on how many successes we had when we were trying to run away and how many we needed if we were bringing Talendil with us and considered that um, briefly. And then we did continue to carry him and, and, and move along. Um, she's got a bow and a keen weapon sword um, when she's fighting and be interested to see what we do with our uh, little vacation time yeah don't go into your updates and stuff yeah we actually do that in the course of play so just like just you know your standard intro and then we'll, we'll dive in because i do want to walk through it because that's one of the things like i'm trying to do more when we play games especially games that are recently released uh so when you know second edition is recently released is try to like 
we play it, but we also like kind of walk through it at the same time. So it's not like straight up a tutorial, but if people are like looking to play it themselves, they can hopefully maybe, you know, learn from our, uh, our blunderheaded uh, mistakes and stuff. So uh, next up, we've got Floy. Long, tell us about Floy. Yeah, I'm playing Floy. He's a dwarf calling his treasure hunting. If you didn't know that, he just loves that treasure. But he's, yeah, he's a young adult. He's been traveling a little bit. And just really combat proficient. Uh, yeah, we've seen, uh, we've, we've actually seen Floyd. He is, he is very proficient in, uh, in the whole combat stuff. He's a stout little dwarf. Uh, we've seen you flying from trees. We've seen you getting bashed into the middle of a swamp by a troll, uh, and living to tell the tale. And, uh, yeah. And I, and I, and you guys fought a, a wraith as well inside the, the ruins of Fornost. So you've, uh, you've had a bit of a gambit here. So we've got some goblins and orcs. We've got some, we got a troll. We got some rays. We're just hitting everything. It's pretty great. Pretty great. And that really big, uh, that really big uh, hill folk person inside of, uh, inside of Oswald's. So mm -hmm. we've seen Floyd really kind of step up. Uh, also, uh, so I guess maybe not necessarily combat proficient, but certainly the best, uh, the best ventriloquist voice throwing person we have in the party. My arrows is... were pretty good. That's, that is true, actually. I think you were the only one who hit one round. Like you were the only one that was hitting. The two of them were missing left and right, but you were you were you were the pro last time. Tell us about Gilly. Uh Gilly Kettlegrass, she is our little hobbit from Bree. Um, and she enjoys reading. She's a scholar. Uh and her points are really based more on like wits and heart strength. Not so great, but she's working on it. Um Yeah. That's that's Gilly. Um, nice. In the opening episode, I was uh, elbow deep in some goat guts, which yeah. is just true to form for me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and she means uh, Ashley, uh, not Gilly. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> not both. Are you kidding me? What yeah, for science? Exactly. For, for science. science. All right. Uh, so let's get started. So let's 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 just do the summary. So like we're going to be doing. We're starting it tonight with some downtime. Uh, with what the game calls fellowship phase, but let's just do a quick summary of the story so far. So all of you are, you've been working together, traveling together, you know, doing odds and ends, maybe scouring some of the ruins and things around the Bree lands together for different reasons to learn, to find treasure, whatever your motivations are. Like the party has, has worked together before. Uh, and you're also all friends or, um, disciples, mentees of, of balance. Some of son of Funden who's, um, uh, your dwarven patron, uh, who uh, who has had asked you at the start of this campaign to look into an issue uh, in the village or the hamlet of Colm, uh, which is a, a smaller village next to Bree. You can see on the map that we're right on top of Bree again. And you uh, you looked into it for him because he loves his mutton and it was like livestock that was being attacked. That turned out to be in, being attacked and, and, and slaughtered by these orcs and goblins. You uh, You track them into the woods. You... Um, you managed to save a, a, a lumberjack woman by the name of Elise Briar Cleave, um, and you learned that there, after befriending an, an ex, uh, an ex Bree warden who's exiled and kind of outcast, you learned that there were there's, there's been activity of late in the area, and like uh, more so than normal. You were he was seeing large groups of orcs and wargs and goblins and and evil men and stuff uh, around the weathered hill weather hills crossing from the south to the north they all seem to be moving northward for some reason and you eventually made it back to town and found some of those evil men those hill folk who had been pretending to be villagers attacking the home of oswald breaker oswald breaker being a scholar a, a, a widowed scholar uh on the outskirts of Combe. you saved him uh, but some of those those hill folk got away. And it turns out that they were most likely, at least Oswald's instinct was that they were looking for something in regards to Fornost, uh, which is also known as Dead Man's Dyke, um, kind of a ruined old city uh, within the, the, the long destroyed kingdom of Arnor. Um, and he was he was ner he was worried about that. So he sent you northward and you met with a friend of his, a ranger of the north named Talendil, and uh, kind of you, you, you went into the ruins and tried to stop them, whatever they were doing, ransacking the place, desecrating the place. You know, you don't know exactly what it is. While there, though, you guys started having these weird 
visions. You were being kind of pulled by the shadow. You were seeing almost like visions from the past, like from the sacking of Fornost uh, by this this evil army of some kind led by a, a, a few very noteworthy figures, a massive troll, some crazed barbarian with a big black axe, some uh, some mounted figure who, who, who wore like a spiked crown. And it took everything you guys could do to get out of that place alive. Um, you nearly lost Talendil in the process. Uh, you had to fight off a wraith, and then you had to escape uh, a whole a whole slew of them. As you saw, a, a kind of a red haired woman, this uh, one of these these hill folk, these larger, stronger kind of these these hardier folk who've like possibly been living, you know, not within the, the easy towns like Bree and Combe and Staddle and but elsewhere, and. She carried that same strange black axe that many of you saw in your visions, and it seemed to, they, she seemed to be working somehow with these wraiths who chased you out of Fornos, nearly killed you, but you got out. And so we'll start kind of there as we'll sort of summarize what, what the next few things that happened. So over the course of the next couple of days, you all hurried down the Greenway. You know, you went south as fast as possible as you had Talendil with you, whose hand was was mostly severed, who took a horrible wound at some point. Looks like he possibly had, um, while, while you were all were exploring this this domed building, um, he, he got separated. And you brought him back into the villages, right? You got him back into the Bree land. And he was certainly in need of, 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 of a heal, of healing, of medicine that you all is kind of beyond your your abilities. Um, so we'll say that likely what's going to happen, what happened is, is you, you managed to solicit help from Oswald. Uh, you, at some point, I'm sure you went back to Oswald and filled a bit on what happened, brought Talendil, who is a friend of his. And we'll say even you probably fetched Alcott Sweetroot, who, you know, is a talented healer, uh, within the small hamlet, uh, hamlet of Combe. Uh, but until Talendil was, was healthy and until Oswald and him could put their heads together and figure out exactly what happened, um, you had some time yourselves to recuperate because you all had taken some wounds. You all are feeling this sense of dread kind of overtake you. Uh, and so we're going to say that a couple weeks are going to pass. Uh, and usually fellowship phase does take a couple weeks. And so we're going to dive in to the fellowship rules, fellowship phase rules. Sound good? Yeah. Let's do it. All right, so let's get some. I hate hearing silence in the background, so I'm just gonna get some basic, uh, basic music up so I don't lose my mind. I like to use tabletop audio, by the way, for those. If, a couple of people have been asked what I use. I use tabletop audio. I'm a patron. I support them on Patreon. They're awesome. Um, okay, so it's been about three weeks, a little more, maybe three to four weeks. Um, now we'll go through the steps. A fellowship phase. So there's basically four four steps that you have to concern yourself with. One is like the duration, which I've already kind of established. It's a, between three weeks and a month, we'll say. Uh, we don't have to be too precise. Um, then you choose a destination, like where you all are going to spend your downtime. It's usually what's called a safe haven, a place where you know things are going to be safe. Now, Bree is, is actually cited as an example. Um, other things are like Rivendale, but it, in terms of like the specific destination, there's some there's some flexibility there, so long as it like makes sense within the amount of time that your duration is going to be. Um, so, did you all have something in mind, or were you satisfied with just doing Bree? I was thinking Bree. It's somewhere we've been before. Yeah, yeah. I'm from Bree, so Gilly would definitely prefer to go there. Okay. All right. Yeah, I can agree with that. All right, Bree, it is. So, um, and by Bree, I'm I'm extending it to like any of the main main villages around here so Staddle, Archit, Combe, etc. So we can kind of shift between them. We don't have to be specific into one. Um, so maybe you spend time at the Prancing Pony, maybe you spend time at the Combe and Waddle. You know, there's all sorts of the Lamplighter Inn over in Staddle. There's all sorts of places where you could sort of relax, recuperate, etc. Uh, so then the next thing we do is you guys start to perform updates. Um, and so those updates involve you getting to spend experience points um, and those skill points and adventuring points. So all of you have, over the course of the first adventuring phase, during everything that I just summarized at the beginning of the session, you all accrued 12 of each. So you get to ex you, you basically get to spend them on a couple different things. Uh, so you can spend adventuring points to buy a new rank in either wisdom or valor. 
uh, in to enhance combat proficiencies of a character. Uh, combat proficiencies are like your ability with weapons and things like that, right? Um, so with wisdom, when you when you increase your ranks of wisdom, that gives you access to new virtues, uh, which are similar to like talents and things like that. When you, but if you choose instead to increase uh, your valor, that gives you extra rewards. Rewards are essentially a way of like buffing items. Uh, so you get to kind of pick certain abilities to add to your weapons. Um, and then your skill points are, are basically there to increase your skill ratings. So all of the various skills that we we have, and there's under each of the categories, um, you can you can increase them. There's some limits. There's some specific you know specific rules that you have to follow. You can only ever increase uh, a skill by one rank per fellowship phase. So you can't like increase like get like I want to have two you know in song all of a sudden or riddle or something like that. You can't do that. Uh, so you have to sort of limit how how you can spend them and. The level that your that your skill is at, when you depending, it, it sort of determines the cost of points. So it's not just like a one for one. It's not like I need, I want one skill point. It's the the higher or the better you get at a particular skill, the more the cost is for like that next skill level. So to go from three to four, or to go from two to three, etc. Uh, hopefully that made sense. Um, so here's what I would like to do. As as the next as three to four weeks are, are transpiring, as we're waiting for Talondale to to heal for Alcott Sweetroot to to help him to to have Oswald also recover himself. He took a horrible head wound and to go through his things and try to learn more, all those types of things. So you guys and you yourselves are recuperating. So here's what I like to do. We're gonna go through this one at a time. I want you to like kind of walk us through what you took, and then if you could. Could you like kind of paint like a small little picture of what your character was doing during these couple of weeks to improve or gain that reward or gain that virtue? Or if you think it's more like a flashback to something that happened during the adventuring phase, you can reference that as well. Does that make sense? Does that sound yep. cool? Yep. Okay. Yep. Anybody ready? Anybody ready to go and raring to go? Yeah, if you have something or no. All right. Let's, okay, long. Right out of the gate. Oh, uh, yeah. Walk us through it. Let's hear it. All right. So Floy, after coming back from that little tomb diving adventure, he realized maybe his athletics weren't as good as he thought. So he spent his time in comb. comb. Uh, early mornings, he'd get up and start just running around the farms, just doing a little jogging and increases endurance. And then when he'd finish his workouts, He'd stop by the stables and get a fresh glass of milk from the cattle. So I increased my athletics by training. So I like to think, I'm not sure, I'm not sure if you remember this. Do you remember the very beginning when you guys were first doing your little investigation yeah, around I, you? I introduced you, myself to yeah. I forget her name, but one of the cattle. Uh, yeah, I think it was Rosa Goodborough? Oh no no no! That was uh, that was Balan's friend. You introduced yourself to Meadow Oldbuck. That was her name. She is a mm -hmm. rustic uh, hobbit sheep and goat farmer who was unimpressed by Floyd. That's why that's why it's in my notes. I'm looking at it right now. So over the course of a couple of weeks, we we see like this montage, like like a Rocky film. We see Floyd just like every morning waking up early doing these like doing these runs and 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 comb and some of these other places they're on hills so you're like kind of doing the run up almost like a stadium run kind of run up the hill and run down the hill you pass by some of the farms you see rosa goodborough who is on good terms with you He's, she's the friend of balan who you know is is, is 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 friendly enough to you and every time you get like the, just like that dirty look from meadow old buck every time you pass by and and like we see it like she just, every morning, she wakes up, she looks at you, hands on hips, kind of just shakes her head behind her like a sheep or a goat, just meh, kind of in disapproval at Floy. But over the course of the couple of weeks, she starts to soften a little bit, and she kind of looks at you, and you get a wave every now and then, something like that. And here's what I would like you to do, Floy, if it's okay. Yeah. Can you roll a test? And this is just... This is purely for funsies, and on, honestly, it'll just sort of change her disposition towards you. Over the course of these couple of weeks, maybe you start, after maybe two or three weeks, you start to have small talk with her. We don't got to play it all out. But could you roll like a persuade, um, 
yeah, roll a persuade test to see if you can kind of just improve her disposition to see if she actually becomes a friend of yours. Yeah, I can do that. I'm not miserable anymore, right? Is, are we like? Uh, no, you all can okay. you, you all can get rid of your your condition at that point. Oh no! Wait, it rolled two. Did you unmark? Might still be miserable, just depending on how the hope. No, I mean set. for this roll, this is me just pulling something, so you don't have to be miserable for this. This is just me having fun. Okay. Uh, okay. I try it again. Oh yeah, go ahead. Go ahead and re-roll it. There you go. Okay, it's not as bad. Oh. Okay. So. So every morning she seems she's coming by, but at a certain point she grows very, very tired of like all of her sheep and all of her goats who have started to befriend you. And every time you run by, like, like they're like, they're an audience cheering on, you know, people who are running a marathon. You just in the morning, this cacophony of meh, 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 meh. And she's just towards the end of, end of, of the downtime. She just, just yells at you. So like, you know, one of these days you could you could try to run around a different farm. You're making all of me, me goats, me sheep go crazy. You silly little man. Just, oh, what are you running for no reason for? You're chased by some, Who runs for no reason? Just what is in bloody hell is wrong with you? Anyway. Okay, so you've got your athletics increase. What else did you do? I also spent all my adventure points on another proficiency in axes. Okay. So another thing I did is went to the woods in the north to pretty much patrol for any lingering goblins or trolls, okay. and just taking them out. As the okay. Game. And I'll say like, and we can we can kind of see you doing that as well. Maybe that's something you do in the afternoons, the evenings, or the nights. Um, but more than once, you run into uh, at least Briarcleave, who who is on the mend, uh, and so. If you recall, she's the one you you all saved who had who had hidden in the tree, and so, and I'll I'll say without a role necessary because you did save her life, and you actually care. I think you were specifically the one who carried her, uh, to to, to back to, back to the village. But uh, more than once, she she you know she kind of comes and helps, and she'll she'll take a sort of she'll take one of these these uh, these scouts with you. She maybe even gives you kind of the lay of the land she points out certain streams and local landmarks and things like that and I, and what i'll say floy is is just a little bonus um and you, this is not something that you can like anything specific but what we'll say is because of all the time that you've spent with her and maybe it's not every night but maybe it's you know once or twice a week and with her giving you all this local knowledge anytime you're in the chetwood if we ever do any more adventures within the chetwood and you want to do some kind of like navigational role of some kind you know and and i'm not saying a specific skill we'll go ahead and we'll say you can take like a like a, a role it, f it favored because of because of this just this this knowledge this information nice. you're getting over time so just make a note somewhere for that mm. all right anything else for floy those were the two way up okay beautiful i like it i like it uh all right so uh Arineal or gilly do you want to jump in on this uh, I can go. Okay. What do you got, Melissa? Okay. So one of the things that I did, um, so I went sort of with the the low spend, and so I increased my uh, persuade and my enhearten skills. And so one of the things that I did um, during this last adventuring phase was um, kind of was helped us in a council um, by befriending an animal and that was a kind of good way to kind of get to know the human and so i think i kind of spend some time uh while we're around um just kind of practicing that like kind of getting to be friendly with you know kind of always keeping little kind of treats in my pocket as i go around and like petting the animals and then kind of making small talk because people you know not so much a fan of rangers usually you kind of get a lot of side sideways looks and things like that so trying to work on that um people skills stuff okay so so would you say it's it's like are you spending time at like some of the inns like comb specifically has like the it's called the comb and waddle the 
uh, like that's a smaller, more local place that maybe a few folks in town who actually already know you might be there and they already know who you are. Uh, then there's the Prancing Pony, obviously, at Bree as well. So that's a much bigger place. Uh, I'll start, start small. Okay. And then maybe, okay. you know, give it a shot, see how it goes. Okay. And so we'll say, like, you managed to to spend a little time while you're there with Graham Sweetroot, if you recall, husband of Alcott, who is the, the healer of town. Uh, they had their, their grown up and moved out children uh, as well. And so more than once we'll say like you manage to, to kind of get a, you know, he'll buy you a beer here or there, maybe even Elise, you know, Elise Briarcleave pops by as she kind of comes in and it's very much a local, a local tavern. Everyone knows everyone's name. You do stand out like a sore thumb in the fact that no one knows who you are, or at least half the people don't, but word gets around that you have, you have been a, an ally of, of the, of the people of Coma. Elise sings your praises. Graham is a little... You know, well, she did barge into our home at one point and kind of, you know, eat our food and sleep in our beds without really giving us much option. Um, but it's still ultimately kind of positive towards you. And then Rosa mm -hmm. Goodborough, the hobbit friend of, of, of Balin. But that Meadow Oldbrook comes in and she's like, now this one's the friend of that, that crazy dwarf who keeps running around the fields, driving me goats crazy. No, no, no. I've got, I've got nothing to do with that, but... It seems, thankfully, people kind of shout that down a bit. Um, okay, so you increased some of your your outward presence. Anything else? Mm -hmm. um, and then, so the other thing that I did is I increased my wisdom by one, um, and I used that to get the virtue prowess, which basically lets you drop one of your TNs by one. And so my wits have been sitting at 18, and so I dropped that down to 17 so that I can access... Yeah some things like persuade and stealth and explore um 18 hard to hit yeah. yeah 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 17 way better uh stanley thank you thank you very much uh so we've got three in the pool now i, I think we we depleted our pool last time didn't we uh yeah yeah we did yeah i think we depleted it so we are replenishing our our audience uh our audience hero point pool not hero point what do we call it bonus uh bonus die pool mm -hmm. um okay uh so What would we say, how would we envision, like, Arineal improving her wits? So what would that there, look like? Some of this has to do with, like, stealth and scan and explore. Okay. Um, so I imagine, you know, the, her, her time was spent sort of in very opposite directions because some of it was sort of the very social um, piece. Um, but then I would say this part was kind of the more isolated, maybe going back out to the Chetwood and just sort of kind of not quite meditating, but, you know, kind of more of that kind of like awareness and, um, you know, keeping an eye out, scanning the environment, stealthily walking around and, you know, kind of more of those kind of individual, quiet kinds of pursuits. So a little bit of, a little bit of social, a little bit of uh, me time. Okay. Very, very nice. Um, Interesting. That's interesting. I also really like the fact that you're playing into the the notion that like rangers aren't usually like the most well liked and everything, and that they're kind of got this this gruffy look to them and, and, and so you're kind of trying to combat that stereotype a bit, which is really cool. That's cool. And both in both are your pursuits, right? In both the, the, the skill points and everything that you've kind of left up. Cool. Um all right. Finally, right, because you're done, uh, I think. Yeah. All right, Gilly. What did Gilly what was Gilly up to these couple of weeks? So, Gilly has had a couple snafus with healing. Like that one time when she was trying to make the salve to put on there and she just royally cocked that up. And then the other time <laughs> when we were trying to heal someone else and like she just wasn't helping at all. So, she met up with Alcott Sweetroot and as sort of also kind of like a to repay her debt as like, um, for staying at their house and stuff unexpectedly she's just been like helping create things for her like whether it's bandages or whatever to refill her stocks and then also just getting some like training on the side like getting pointed towards books that might help her okay. and then i am i imagine like alcott has her like start sewing to kind of practice stitches or something because okay. she can't necessarily practice on a person all the time so like so there's like a scene side. of her just dropping like all of their old clothes that you need to fix yes. for them 
Yeah. And okay. so I'm like, I'm stitching like holes or like fixing sleeves, stuff like that. It's like a, it's a very like Mr. Miyagi moment where she's just making you do all her chores. <laughs> yeah. Just fixing yeah. everything. And, and like, and over time you're like getting into the habit of that. Okay. And I imagine like the first time you knock on her door, she looks at, she's like, oh no, not again. You've, you can, you've got your own room at, at the late now. It's, this isn't a hotel. And, and then eventually time. Yeah. yeah. It's just like, oh, uh, and I don't have to pay you. Well, okay. We've got some things to do around here. Yeah. And maybe like a couple of times, you know, people come by for different reasons, children with, you know, stomach ailments and you help put together some kind of, you know, something to help them kind of get through it. Or maybe people with injuries from handling their, you know, you know, on the livestock and stuff like that. Someone's kicked by a donkey or whatever, you know, those types of things. They happen all the time. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, anything else? Um, I spent some of my adventuring points to level up my wisdom. And then I wanted to take a... I had a question to see if I could take it. Okay. Um, I wanted the art of disappearing. Um, okay. Uh, is that a cultural virtue? Yes. Who? What's it under? Is it a hobbit It's one? under a hobbit one, yeah. Because I know I'm a Brie hobbit, so it's a little weirder for me. But I liked this one because remember when we were in the area and I like crossed that road and I sort of disappeared, I rolled a really good stealth roll. Mm -hmm. I wanted to kind of play into that. Like ever since I did that, like naturally, I just got a little bit better at stealth. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I don't see any reason why not. I think you've tied it to the story. Um, I think you've convinced me. It's fine. Like uh, if we'll check to see whether or not the rules are correct or not, but either way, like go ahead and do it. Like Sweet. I don't see any reason not to. Okay. Sweet. Because I think you take the stats of a hobbit and then you take the culture of, of Bree. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. I think that's what it is. So this is this would be possibly breaking that a little bit, but I think a it makes sense. A little bit. Yeah. yeah. And okay. then I can and read that. So the art of disappearing is hobbits are said to have little or no magic about them, but the way that they um oh this font is driving me nuts. Uh, the way that they can disappear quickly and quietly um, can be described as there's as only supernatural. Um, you have learned to choose exactly the right moment to turn away from the attention of others, sometimes unconsciously anticipating the need to disappear. So I thought that was pretty cool. Okay. Um, so maybe at some point you take a little bit of a trip uh, up the road with with Alcott uh, to Staddle as you're kind of doing some basic odds and ends in these trades. And that's where I think there's a larger Hobbit population. And maybe kind of as you're, as you're doing some, uh, some, some trade, maybe she's got some poultices and things like that. She, she sells, uh, maybe she's, you know, just got like a, a medical wagon or something. Uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, the two of you are spending some time there. Maybe you manage to kind of meet up with a friend or so you 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 make uh you make friends with some of the locals there and i'll leave yeah. that to you maybe you come up with an npc for me uh for later you don't gotta do it right this second but for later right. we can kind of you know rope them back in somehow and they kind of give you you know some tips here and there uh you spend some like time to... at the lamp lighter in is the name of the end it's okay yeah go ahead i like to imagine later like when i'm back where uh floy and ariel are arenial are at and like they're in the bar Maybe somebody's getting drunk and like <laughs> uh, <laughs> she's about to start yelling at Floy about annoying her goats and stuff. And that's when Gilly just manages to just kind of like disappear from the situation to not get lumped in with that. Yeah. So like there is a Rennial and Floy like and they're they're having a drink back at the Coleman Waddle and uh and meadow oldbrook she comes right in and she's like oh no and she looks at all three of you and then she just starts <laughs> going on and on about how well this one over here pointing at floyd driving more all the man was crazy and this one over here apparently barges into people's homes thinks that they can just take it over like it's some sort of inn oh does it look like an inn and meanwhile gilly is just slinking away into the shadows <laughs> and just disappearing okay and then she goes to go and this one and this was one well, well, I was going to say she was fixing clothes. Don't you but... guys have a friend with you? <laughs> yeah, like, where was the, the other one? I don't know, but there's something wrong with that one, too, I'll say. Okay, so perfect. All right, so we're all set. We've gone through our skill. Everyone's spent their points. Uh, I think, mm -hmm. So, okay, so then let's move on. So that that's that's the... 
That's basically step three, which is perform updates. And then step four of the fellowship phase is choose undertakings. So undertakings um, are essentially time consuming endeavors uh, and you get a certain number of them depending upon whether this is a normal fellowship phase or whether it's Yule, which is like holiday season. Uh, this is just normal. Uh, and that means that you all as a company, you choose one undertaking that you all agree upon to do. And then you get a second one, uh, but that's from a very specific list that only is available to each of your uh, each of your callings. So I'm just going to go through them. So for for folks in the audience, um, so the different types of undertakings you can do. There's gather rumors. So rumors is basically something that a, the the lore master will give you some kind of some something useful to the adventure. So maybe they learn something about the you know the orcs, goblins, something about the hill folk, or you know, something about the black axe or stuff like that, right? Um, another undertaking option is meet patron, where they could literally have a meeting with Balin in this case. Um, usually that work, that ends up like you getting, you know, asking for help in exchange for a favor. Uh, there's strength in fellowship, um, which raises your fellowship rating by plus one until till the next fellowship phase. Now you have instead of the five that you current five fellowship points to play with that you currently have, you have six. Um, and that's usually like you guys bonding, spending quality time together, etc. Uh, there's ponder stories and, and figure maps and things. Uh, and that allows you to kind of maybe go through Oswald Breaker's things and stuff like that and try to learn more about the area or learn more about lore or something like that. So in some ways, you know, similar to, to rumors, but specifically the maps actually gives you a, a boost to like, I think it's a, isn't a boost to journey phase, Melissa, is that right? It's a plus one modifier to all feet rolls made to determine the nature of events during journeys. Exactly. So it's a journey phase. So journey phase, there's there's certain rolls that you make. Uh, and then there's study magical items. So if you looted any magical items and you guys did get one, uh, you uh, you basically learn what it's about, what qualities it has, what, what it can do, that kind of thing. There's also write a song, uh, which allows you to choose between three different types of songs that essentially either boosts your council, boosts your journey, or boosts combat uh, until the the next uh, the next fellowship phase. Um, then there's then there's a couple that are Yule only, which we won't talk about right now. We'll, that's like heal scars, raise an air, or recount a story. Um, so you all can pick from any of those as your first like joint one. And then you have to choose one of three from like the free options. And so since we have uh, a champion, one of the free options is uh, write a song, Songs. treasure hunter gets uh, study magical items, and scholar gets ponder story figures and maps. So for your, for like, so those, so you have to pick between one of those three for one of your undertakings. And then the other undertaking you pick can be any of the other ones that I listed. Hopefully that made sense. I think I explained that poorly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. So did you guys talk this out? We did not talk this Absolutely. out. We're going to talk. Well, about go this. ahead. I'm just going to lean back and let you all take <laughs> over. Of course, we all agreed on strength under the fellowship, right? I, I actually was leaning that way because it's a benefit every single session because yeah. we would have the six uh, fellowship points every session. So I like that. Yeah, yeah until I don't, the next I don't fellowship. think we need like help from Fallon. I think we're doing fine. We don't have a particular question in mind. Like I think if we came back with a very specific need for something, that could make sense. Yeah. No, I definitely agree. And then we're supposed to pick another one, Jeff. Okay. Yep. So and then so the that other one, one that... has to be one of the other right. three. So the other yeah. one can only be look at maps, magical item, or write a song. Okay, so before we get to that, so what did the three of you do to bond over the next three to four? What does that look like, like, over the next couple of weeks? It starts out really awkward. So, <laughs> Boy's doing his running thing, right? And Gilly still has a little bit of awestruck, so we're trying to break her of that. So, <laughs> I presume Arenial, every time she catches me, like, fangirling, she's just, like, elbows me kind of harshly, and she's like, stop being weird. And then from there, what what do we do next? 
just a mod. It's just something simple. Like, you know, we don't figure, like yeah. it could be just drinking games. It could I'm be... just laughing at like, we're trying to be friend, except instead of it just being Floyd running every day. No, like this is oh, what we're we do. All, this all three of you. <laughs> so by the third week, it's all three of you running together. And like, so the first time you see Meadow, but, oh, no, 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 no. And then like the next day after she sees you the first time, there's a big sign that has like like a little stick figure doing a run with a red circle around it and a line through it. And then you guys kind of come up to it and you can see her there. She's got a crossbow in hand or a bow in hand. She's like, you better not trespass. I swear to you, I'm going to take out all of your legs. And she's very, very upset. But she doesn't, of course, because that would be crazy. Uh we but yeah, just, you like, start... start to walk briskly past her part, and then like it's like sp <laughs> sprints. So we take a quick That's... break as we walk past her, and then we start sprinting. <laughs> Astralis has it right. Get off my lawn! Get off it! I don't want you on my lawn or anywhere near. <laughs> okay. Okay. So then you guys get another um, another undertaking. This is for free. Uh, or excuse me, this is the one that's got to be one of the free ones. So it's the choices between study magical items, uh, ponder story and figure maps, uh, stories and figure maps, uh, or write a song. One of those three. I would say probably either the magical item or the map, because we did get a magical item. Um, and then we also we did. Um, have, you know, whatever there is from Breakers. I think story-wise, like the studying the maps and stuff kind of makes sense, especially because we went to the ruins and stuff, but uh, I also am very curious about what the magical item is. If it makes any difference, I don't think you would actually get the benefit of like the, like a, so like a magical item in this game, like there's, mm -hmm. um, like this is what's called a marvelous artifact. There's another one that's even better. I can't remember the name of it, but essentially they have what are called blessings. And they, so a marvelous artifact has one blessing on it. And then the other one whose name wondrous is escape, a uh, wondrous item has, um, has two blessings on it. This would, this would end up being a marvelous artifact. So it's got one blessing on it. And I don't think you actually would get the benefit of it unless you actually did study magical items. So if that is a, if that influences oh. your choice at all. And also, so you would basically just have it until the next fellowship phase where you can identify it. And if we do it in another fellowship phase, basically one doing taking this as an undertaking gives you all of the magical information about everything that you have in your possession. Mm -hmm. So kind of doing it when we only have one isn't necessarily as efficient as gathering a couple things and then doing it all at once. The other thing I would um, I would I would also want to slow your rolls a bit. Like in one ring, don't expect like 50 magical items yeah. like there is a treasure index that i use that sort of limits the amount like i i know exactly how many of these types of items are going to be in the world and there's not that many you know so like and then so you're, you're, don't expect hard, don't expect one like every other week it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's how it is yeah considering how hard floyd though worked to get us that magical item <laughs> i think we should study it <laughs> eyes are so good, big yeah. yeah let's study it why not Okay, uh, so yeah, to so you guys managed to find amongst one of the sacks of these, you know, these different treasure hunters and hill folk. Um, maybe you've lost track of specifically which group had it or not, but you you managed to find it was a it was actually a very interesting find. Whereas most everything else that you discovered was, you know, these 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 goblets of gold and silver, very simple things with some precious stones, and all of that is is very good. Don't don't. I don't want to suggest it isn't. There was something about this one helm that you discovered that it was kind of slightly battered. There was a dent in the back, um, a bit. It wasn't like so much weather worn as it was. It definitely had age to it, but it was still extraordinarily sturdy. It was incredibly well made. And and I mean, Floyd, being a dwarf, you were probably at a certain point impressed with the craftsmanship, right? Um, but you noticed that there were there are a couple of things that were kind of interesting about it. One is it bore the crest of the kings of Arnor, uh, and Arnor being a former kingdom of where you're at. It's no longer in you know obviously in, in play, but it's a former kingdom. Eventually, it kind of broke into three separate kingdoms, and then there was, there was attempts to to sort of rejoin them. Um, and it also has this band, almost like a crown of silver, that wraps around it. So, 
we'll say is as you're as you're kind of studying this, you wear this, you look into this, maybe you even consult Oswald Breaker at a certain point. And you know, you the the types of the types of smiths that are available within Bree and some of these other places, take a look at this thing and it's beyond them. Like they're like they're used to making horseshoes, they're used to making nails, they're used to making small tools and things like that. Rarely do they have to make weaponry or armor or anything like that. That's not the type of things that they would they would come to. So like most of those that you consult with over the course of these couple of weeks, like they're it is but it is beyond it. They're not sure, but they're amazed by it. It looks incredibly well, you know, well made. Um you consult with Oswald Breaker, you show him the crest, he does a little research for you. And he comes back and he kind of thinks he's he's sort of figured it out. Um, and he notes it as a helm that was worn by a former king of Arnor and Arthedain by the name of Argaleb I. And he starts to regale you with a little bit of a story, right? He starts to talk about how many, many years ago, and this, again, this guy is a major scholar, right? Earlier, like thousands, you know, thousand plus years ago, there were three king kingdoms that like kind of made up Arnor, right? And there was there was Arthedain, there was Cardolan, and there's Rudaur, a name, a word that like you're kind of familiar with. And that at a certain point, the the, the a man by the name of Argaleb, who was king of Arthedain, decided he was going to lay claim and try to kind of unite those three kingdoms once more under the banner of Arnor. And Cardolan accepted this. But at some point, but for some reason that this initially makes sense, Rudauer rejected it. And, it, and they eventually learned that Rudauer had kind of fallen under the sway of like the kingdom of Angmar, like this witch kingdom is, and they, they kind of, and they fought. And so there was this huge battle, etc. cetera. And, it, and somewhere while defending Weathertop and those, uh, the, some of the, the watchtowers al along the Weathered Hills is where Argolib fell. Um, and Argolib was also Argolib was also known as like like in I think it was in Sindarin like his his name like translates to like Silver King and you can see this like silver crown that kind of moves around his battle helm. Um, and so, also, it's pretty convinced that you have literally discovered the battle helm of a former king of Arnor and Arthedain. And it's the type of it's a, like and as as like you kind of put it on your heads whoever you know you guys can decide who who wears this but eff effectively what you what he what he kind of tells you is that like in in battle you know he like this this shining beacon of silver around his helmet it, it, it in the crest it, it helped like kind of make the crest of arnor the kings of arnor just just like the contrast of it against the against the silver band was such that like the soldiers around would kind of look to that so that helm and as a sort of a beacon uh, that sort of encouraged them in some way and, and it gave them hope it gave them leadership and the blessing that you would get for this affects the battle skill so anytime you would roll battle you would get an extra 2d6 bonus die additionally you would also be able to achieve a magical success with this. So a magical success is when you spend one hope before a skill roll to achieve an automatic success, regardless of the target number. Nice. So that, so like, you know, one day, like, so like, it's just like a story time day where Oswald's sort of like recounting this. And, and he also finds it very interesting that this specific helm is what you discover when you, you know, like when you're getting this this information of like hill folk that used to probably probably the ancestors of the the folks who used to live within the kingdom of Rudaur who were influenced by the evils of Angmar. This is the treasure that you all discover within Fornos. The ruins, like all of it's kind of connected in some way, and he's he's. He's like talking about there's you know no coincidences and it's almost in a conspiratorial way, or or in like a there's more there, you know there's like a fate like he's thinking of like almost fate something's you know or you know something's destined, um, so he seems to be very very uh, very very enamored with it and he kind of takes a bit of uh, uh, encouragement and kind of hits the books again and researches even more and more and more and kind of digging into his his books. Uh, so who's taken this thing? 
Isn't battle one of the like special skills during combat? Uh, it's a uh, heart skill underneath. Privacy. It's a heart skill. Right, but what is battle used for? Isn't it like a combat ability that you can use? You're right, and when oh, you're yeah, being yeah, combat defensive, yeah. uh, protect companion is a battle roll. Yes. Mm. Yeah, he explains how like Argaleb was a you know was a noble man. Like he was he was, you know, the line of of like of, of like Numenorean kings. Like he mentions names that as as you know as people you might be familiar with like Isildur and others that but you know to you as player you know as characters might not be as familiar. But like this was you know a major noble figure who tried to unite the kingdoms once more and then like held off successfully you know the like early onslaughts of rudaur and angmar before like a, the major war with angmar kind of overtook the remains of cardolan and the remains of arthedain years and years later um but argaleb was kind of the first to really sort of step up and and do something about it right and he fell to these evil folk of rudaur and they she fell to these these the the witch you know the the kind of the witch sorcerers of angmar who who influenced the the folks, the noble folks of Rudaur and such. So, like he is, he is just in awe of this item, and but he's not stealing it from you. Obviously, that would be mean. Um, but he says, whoever takes it, understand, understand whose whose helm you carry and the noble virtues that you know that this embodies, and do not take it lightly. As he hands it back to the group of you. So I would argue between either Renewal or me. Because I've never even entered defensive mode, so <laughs> I don't know if I would use it. As we've learned from Metal Oldbrook, Floy is nothing but offensive. <laughs> yeah, and Renewal does go into defensive a, a decent amount um, in order to be in close stance, but not necessarily taking a lot of the blows. Okay. So Floy, I think we've worked with you long enough to know that you like the treasure, um, but I would, I would wear it if it made more sense. It's still okay. in our belonging, so I should. I'll crown you the our champion. If you ever try and run away with it, though, he'll hunt you down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. So, so maybe, maybe Floyd, maybe Oswald, whatever, like, like almost regally, puts it on top of your head, and it fits perfectly. And you, and there's like, like, like a, you know, you are. I mean, you're not. I think what you said, you're specifically not, you don't have the blood of the Dunedain running through you. Like you're not, that, that you didn't take that specific cultural virtue or whatever, but you are a ranger of the North whom the rangers are what's left of the kingdom of Arnor. Like that's mm -hmm. who they became after Angmar, Angmar destroyed Fornost and, and, you know, or sacked Fornost. And even though Angmar itself was, was defeated, like, the kingdom itself no longer exists and all that remains are, are your people. And it probably makes sense. And I think maybe even Oswald feels better about it kind of going on your head. And, and he mentions, and he kind of, he mentions like you wear the, you know, you wear the helm of the, of the sing silver king atop your head. Wear it proudly. Do the right thing. And, uh, it will serve you well. I will, I will do my best. And she sort of feels like it's fairly gaudy for her because it's got like silver and all these things. So you'll see her just kind of take her cloak and just sort of still put the cloak sort of up and over it. Um, but she kind of stands a little bit taller. Okay. Seeing you cover it up though, like Oswald kind of winces ever so slightly, you know? And I should say also that that dent still remains to be in there. None of the Smiths in the area were able to to do anything with it. Um, again, craftsmanship beyond their abilities. Okay. So then the last thing that we got to do, and then we can kind of dive into some new things is we didn't talk about this is you guys get to do spiritual recovery as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so you automatically recover a number of hope points equal to your heart score. So go ahead Unless and do that. Unless you're me. And then... Unless you're a renewal. <laughs> <laughs> and so this is specifically because uh, Culture Ranger of the North um oh, Aaron, thank you so much for the bits curse oh. uh, i guess if anyone's gonna get the book i appreciate it. Aaron is, is 
he suffers with me as well. We're always one of the last to get our stuff free league, but we know it's coming. Uh, treat it well, my friend. Treat it well. One day. I don't even have a... I don't even have a shipping notice yet. Oh. Okay. Very sad. Okay. Uh, so that basically, it's because of my culture. Uh, during the fellowship phase, I only recover a maximum number of hit points equal to half my heart score rounded up. You mean hope? Hope points, I think, not hit points. Number of hope points equal yeah. to half my heart okay. score. So that's the first thing for spiritual recovery. And the second thing is... Um, if the adventuring phase was a positive outcome in the fight against the encroaching shadow, you get to remove some shadow points. And it's usually one to three, and it's up to the lore master. And so I gave this some thought. I'm right there with you, Eric. Like, mine hasn't even shipped yet either. Like, ah, uh, it's just, it's brutal. Um, so I, I was going to say one for this. Um, you managed to interrupt the Hill Folk's plans at Oswald's. Uh, you kind of interfered a little bit at, at Fornost, but... Ultimately, um, the main figure got away. Uh, the orcs and goblins, although you were able to save uh, at least Briar Cleave, you know, there, there, like, there were still all of those stories about like the bands and stuff going into the hills. So you guys can remove one shadow point. Which, just to say, still leaves me miserable. Right. So you know what you can do, right? If you want to flush your shadow score. You know take what you have to do. Scar. Oh, you could take a scar. Take a, gotta take a scar. So if you take a so a shadow scar, it means you can flush. You can basically flush your shadow points, but it means you have a permanent shadow point now. So like whenever you you kind of reset your shadow points, you always have like one more than what you previously had. Or are those many scars that? Ah, uh, in the character sheet. Let me take a look. Let me see. There's so, a spot for shadow scars. Yeah. Yeah. There's temporary. There's shadow scars, and then yeah. there's the. What is taking one do? So it resets it so it makes you it lets you clear all of your shadow. So you clear it all. Uh but a shadow scar is like a is like a permanent shadow point. So you're always gonna have one now. So anytime you mm. kind of reset or recheck, you're always gonna only go back to like what you previously had. Um I think shadow scars can be removed, but they can only be removed during a Yule fellowship phase. That is correct it's a heal scars undertaking that happens so it's not like when we say permanent it's permanent but it, it can be removed at a certain point but infrequently and a yule fellowship phase is like once every four seasons basically think of it like think of it like around you know christmas time holiday season new year that kind of thing all right i'll do it okay yeah, i think i'm gonna take a scar as well you guys just want to like start the adventuring phase fresh get rid of the miserable nature yeah it it makes sense i mean you you went through some some rough things you know you 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 fought some goblins things went well but you also you witnessed some strange events you were touched by wraiths attacked by wraiths you were chased by wraiths the the, the visions you were seeing it, it probably makes sense that there is that kind of lingering touch of shadow on you you know so i think i think it sort of makes sense what about you gilly are you doing it as well um yeah, it kind of makes sense to have a tangible mark of like our, our first brush with the shadow. I kind of nice. like that. Awesome. All right. So that is fellowship phase. So let's move forward a bit. So after about three to four weeks or so of you all working around town, moving here and there, that's too nice. I want I want something a little bit more ominous, I like ominous music. After a few weeks of you all working through, um, resting, developing new uh, new abilities, uh, befriending some of the locals even more, annoying others, you are all called to a meeting, and. The meeting is actually held at Oswald Breaker's home as you're kind of chased down by kind of a young, you know, kind of a young boy who is who's sort of delivering message and he kind of hands over to you what looks like a note and it's kind of got that wax seal on it. And you've all been invited effectively to a meeting to determine the threat in the North is sort of how it's written. And 
kind of list to time, list to place. And eventually, you know, one by one, you all kind of arrive or together, but the day the day arrives. And it, it's over at Oswald Breaker's home. And when you arrive, uh, let's bring us back here. Let's see if that works. You all, you all are familiar with this place. You had a bit of a run-in with some, some hill folks here. Uh, but when you arrive, you notice that you're not the only one who seems to have been invited. You notice familiar fla- faces across the board. You see Oswald Breaker, who when you when you enter in, he's 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 delighted to see you all. It's, it's probably a, you know a few days after you've had your your discussion about the helm, and he sees a rineal that's still on your helm and stuff. And maybe if your hood's still up, he says you know he'll he'll kind of offhandedly kind of whisper to you, "There's nothing to be ashamed of here." Wear it proudly. You are among friends. As you walk in, remove the hood of the cloak indoors. You also come in and you see your 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 patron Balin is in the room, uh, and Floyd Balin gives you kind of like a, a hearty handshake, and you know your your kin, and uh, before you even have to ask for one, he slides over to you like a a, a massive like pint of brew. And he's like, and uh, a big plate of cheese as you're ready to go. And he remarks that he's heard, uh, he's heard some, some strange stories from, uh, uh, from some of the, the folk in Gome about your exercise routines. <laughs> um, and then Gilly, when you walk in, you also see that there is Elise Briar Cleave, uh, a woman you've, uh, you, you helped. And, and Floyd, she also gives you a smile and a wave. Um, and, and Gilly, you see Alcott is in, is in here as well. She is sitting by the fire with Talendil, who looks better. Uh, he's been recuperating for some time. Um, maybe you've done some, some rounds with Alcott and check the bandage on his, on his, on his hand, Mm -hmm. his sword hand, unfortunately. And also some of the other wounds that he suffered, including a very terrible wound to his back that has affected some of his, his ability to walk cleanly. But he seems better, um, in better spirits at the very least, and he's very happy to see all of you. But eventually, you know, you, you, you know, everyone kind of gets food, you settle down, and, and there's like some small talk at first, and Talendil or Reniel looks at you and sees the helm and you can see like a, a, a kind of a, a, a sad but appreciative smile kind of comes to his, his face. And uh, he says, I am pleased to see that you live. And he kind of looks around for Floyd. I have ensured the dwarf did not get his, his hands on that. I would feel mortified to think greedy folk such as him would do him deign to wear the helm of our ancestor just as I'm sure he would not be too keen if we were to swing the axe of his forefathers I think he's earned a bit more credit than that but I understand of course he's brave and good-hearted stout dwarf of course he is he I would not be alive I'm sure if not for him and for what you to have done but it is well known the dwarves they they dig too greedily and too deep greed runs through them let us not talk on it any further I mean no offense I apologize Let's let's move on. Indeed, indeed. There are dark days ahead, I fear. And the helm will do you well, I think, should you take up the call that this and he kind of with his bandaged hand does uh, a kind of like a half hearted, almost sarcastic like like reveal. This council, such as it is, 
so Oswald, uh, you know, at the at the head of the table, like it kind of is is curmudgeonly ways. He's like, okay, okay, enough, enough with the small talk. We've got we've got discussions to be had. All of you, down with you. Sit, eat. Don't drink too much. He looks over at Balin at that point. It's it's early, my second. Leave me alone. I'm just. We finished the first mug yet. Passed over. <laughs> We are here, Oswald says, because, well, a threat grows, and we are here to ascertain exactly how serious it is and how immediate it is to those who live within the Breedlands. Balin and I have called you here. Because the three of you and others, Lise, Talendil, have have borne witness to serious accounts. Accounts that our Bree Wardens are less inclined to believe, or at the very least, not equipped to handle. My very home, my very home, where I and my beloved wife spent years together, I was desecrated by that threat. And I see the three of you as an opportunity to ensure that no other home within the breed land suffers as mine has. Are you up for such a challenge? This is very important. The safety of your of your home, I understand. This is very important to you. And so um, it's at that point that he just kind of sits down as he was kind of doing like this whole like everyone come into order type of thing. And he kind of nods over at Balin, who like has like a little bit of a mustache now from drinking. Oh, right. Me. Yes. So as to the uh, threat of the orcs and goblins, uh, we have received uh, I have received word from um, individuals to the south uh, in Dunland who have well, they have uh, revealed to me that uh, there was in fact a uh, a war band of orcs who had been terrorizing the north south route. For some time, they were said to have taken the beards of slain dwarves. And he kind of winces as he says it, looks over at Floy, and almost like almost like instinctively just sort of grabs his own beard. As well as the teeth of slain humans as bubbles. They're led by a very large, very vicious, and very shrewd orc who goes apparently by the name of Rotak. Now, the communities of which I speak have said they have uh, not seen this warband's activity of late within the past few weeks, months, and I think that confirms for reasons as yet discovered that this band of orcs and goblins has moved north Beyond Tharbad, near the Breedlands, and even further north. Unfortunately, there's not much more information we have as of yet. But, he kind of looks over at Floyd at this point. This is not merely a threat to the human lands. This is an individual who takes perverse pleasure and mutilating our kind as well, Floy. Oh, uh, with that, I think I still have that lock of uh, dwarf hair. I mm -hmm. think I've seen it first day, or at least encountered it. And you can see he just sort of, again, he kind of like, like a, you know, like a breath kind of comes out at that point, like a little whistle in between his teeth. 
apparently he, uh, this road hag sees himself as a leader of some kind. He's apparently managed to organize in ways that previous groupings of goblins and orcs have, have not been able to, affording them some sort of structure. And he even, as reports are to be believed, <laughs> has taken up the human, uh, the human habit, uh, uh, habit of, uh, of colors and arms. What he is doing up here and why he continues to move north is, is, is what we'll have to, have to determine still. So, like, over by the, the, the fireplace where you see, like, Talendil, who's, who's, like, sitting in this cushioned chair, his legs up, and, like, he's, he's essentially in, in, in sort of this, this awful condition. Uh, but he calls up, and he says, it's like, I believe they're being called Northwood. Dang, Ma. I've heard disturbing rumors from other rangers that there's been movement across the Grey Waste. I've told Rinial and the rest of this. But you all should hear it as well. Strange beasts and folk that they were tracking, moving in numbers and in groups and in areas where activity has not been seen before and Rumor has reached me that even within the dead realm of Angbar, lights appeared atop the ruins of Kandum. We worry that perhaps a new servant of the Shadow occupies the tower. Perhaps this road hack aims to serve this new servant of the shadow. So it like very dramatically. Arrhenia will we've we've heard of the the blue the blue banner and the red sash with the red slash on it. And Balin like speaks up. Hi, hi. That is what I've been been told. Very easy to recognize, indeed. Uh, to be honest, any orc or goblin is worthy of a cleave. But any who does this, he kind of looks at the beard that's now on the table, and the, that's got like little teeth bobbles in it as well. And so you can hear it kind of clanking against the wooden table as he moves it around with like a a knife as he's was just previously cutting cheese with um anyone who does this is mm. it makes this old man's blood boil it does so also at the table like at the other end like right next to you uh floy uh you can see at least briar cleave is kind of sitting there listening and she says well Fair enough, all this doom and gloom, but at the very least, I have a bit of good news, such as it is, or maybe it's not as good a news as I thought it was. Maybe it's just, well, suffice to say, the raids on the Calm livestock have, have ceased. Flor and I have, well, we've been patrolling the Chetwood the past few weeks together, and I've been showing him various spots, lookout spots here and there where they can see activity. We've seen no goblins, we've seen no orcs, nothing of sort. Check what's clear. I've spoken with the farmers of Calm and Stadol and even, even those strange folk up in Archit and no attacks, nothing. We've had now dead sheep, cattle, chickens, now missing folk at all. They've stopped. But that's good news, is it not? This sounds like good news for you, but 
possibly bad news for wherever they've moved on to. I worry it's because they got what they were looking for. Because the woman with the red hair, she took the map and other items as she looks at Oswald when when you were attacked. And then when and she looks at Talendal. When when we were trying to get you out of there, we saw her. She left on horseback and she had a sack of something that we couldn't get from her before she set the wraiths on us. Balan kind of like, kind of peers like side-eyed at you because he's, he's sitting right next to you. He kind of just looks over. She set, set the, the rice on you. She did. Called they, them. They wrote 12 rows from, from, from their graves and they chased us out of there. She had this great large, and she'll like, uh, Gilly like describes the weapon that they saw her wielding. Mm -hmm. And it's because it was similar to what we kept seeing in our visions, right, Jeff? Yes, the weapon and then, was. Yeah, and then Gilly will point that out. And, and Talendel had to keep waking us from these horrible waking echoes of whatever happened in the past of this ghost rider. And her weapon was his weapon or their weapon. Talendale kind of confirms and she's just like, they, the ruins of Fornos, do strange things to those who go there. There's many a yes, tragic tale that has, that has befallen that place. And the, the horrible things that were done there, they leave an imprint on a place. In the soil, and the rocks, and the stone. They touched the three of you, and they have sent me such messages before, but perhaps I have spent enough time there to be a nod to it. It sounds as though you... you saw... you saw the sacking of the city. Our forces and Vangmar allied with Rudauer many, many, many years ago. Long before any of us walk this earth, even Balin. I'll just hear no offense, Balin. He's like, <clears throat> Felice is like, nevertheless, let's look at this glass half full. I spoke with Hollis Oakstout as well, uh, and he says that. He hasn't seen any more goblin warbands or orc raiding parties moving through the marshes. Then there's nobody who knows the marshes better than Hollis. None of us here. Alcott kind of looks over at, at Alcott, who's just kind of sitting there, and she's looking back. None of us here believe that Hollis is a lawyer. Many things he might be. A liar is he, he is not, and I consider him a friend. Well, he says that now orc activity, at least it's dwindled, occasional group here, there in the Weathered Hills. He says that, well, they were swarming the Weathered Hills for weeks, and then suddenly they turned north, headed off to the Etten Moors, to Mount Garm. Excuse me, Mount Graham. But he did say that there is long dead drowned within the marshes that have stirred a bit. It's not an issue for him, of course. He knows every nook and cranny of that place, but... Well... He and his hounds can see them coming, but restless it is. Ghosts of the past... Wandering through and over the waters, the swamps. He doesn't think they threaten the towns necessarily. He hasn't seen them leave the confines of the marshes themselves, but well, let's just say no one should be wandering there. Not that anyone would, but no one should be wandering there until we figure such things out. Also, he says hello to the three of you, and he said to inquire about his mum. 
I'm not sure what that means. Oh, we were to pay her a visit, but we haven't gotten a chance. Oh. Well, you re you've had to keep up your exercise regimen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Renny, I'll just sort of hang your head a bit at that. Has he has he been in any danger, or this is something he's observed from a distance? He said that one night his dog, his helper, was barking something fierce, and when he awoke, the other one, Quint, was by the water, and tail tucked underneath its legs. It seemed lost, confused a bit, and it's then. That a hand reached up out of the water and tried to grab him. It's okay. Dog and man are okay. Oh, thank goodness. But he's no longer, or at least, he's moved from his normal camping grounds. He's agreed to continue watch and we have a system if he needs to alert me of something. But perhaps it's just the optimist in me, but. Fewer attacks and fewer orcs and goblins in the hills. I see that as a positive. And if the dead stay within the swamp, well, that's not that much of a problem, is it? Until it is a problem. And then nothing's been done to try to keep their numbers down. There's... We can't just wait for something worse to happen. I am very grateful that we don't... You all don't have to worry about nightly attacks or waking up to more livestock being slaughtered. This is absolutely a turn in the right direction, but this is does not seem like a time to let the guard down just because it's not immediately at your back door. I didn't say we keep our guard down. We keep careful watch, Hollis, myself. I think this is something the two of us can handle, and if need be, there are others here that can lend a not that I think battling whatever you all battled at Fornost is something within our capabilities, but we can at least see an alert should dangers before us. And I'm sorry, but I don't see a bunch of drowned dead wandering out of the Midgewater marshes and attacking Attacking the Braylands, if they could do such a thing, they could have done that for hundreds of years now. I mean, when we were speaking with Hollis, he he did say that that the shadows were growing. And the first time that we went out there, we got attacked by a troll. You're in a swamp, there's trolls. Sometimes we see them in the in, in, in the Chitwood. Not recently, of course. True, but I'd, vigilance can't go... I, I think that would still be a great idea, but I feel like it's, it's, it's bigger than just us now. I, I feel like the problem's grown much larger than just Comb and the Breelands. You see, like, Oswald on the you know, over right next to you, like Gilly, it kind of like does the little tap of his, his mug kind of as in agreement, you know, like as he's mm -hmm. like, at least someone here sees the bigger picture. We've got activity along the Eastern Road. Weather Hills were swarming with orcs and goblins who had now headed north to a long dead kingdom whose only claim to history is that it destroyed one of the finest and most revered human kingdoms of all time. Your very people, the very folks who made that helm you wear, Aridio. And now, those who allied with themselves, who were said to be driven from the land, slaughtered, when a host of elves and men took back Fornost and drove the army of Angmar back into its realm, 
destroyed it, wiped it from the face of Earth. Well, they seem to have not been wiped, have they? Because they were in my living room. They broke that picture over there for my beloved wife. They broke into my home. They stole my things. And they down there broke my skull. So yes, I agree with the little one. Bigger picture. The question then is, what do we do about it? So this Orthord, Rotak, he's heading north. Are the Hillfolk always... Was that Hillfolk? They were heading north as well? So you guys saw... So when, when you last encountered her, yeah, because you were in the North Downs. So if you if you guys want to, you can click over to the area door map, and you can kind of get a feel. Like I can I can ping some stuff for you if you want to get a look at this. So you guys, uh, when you encountered the, or you were in Fornos, which is you know right here where I'm pinging, um, which is again northern area door, uh, and then you saw the woman who possibly. You know who who had that axe and maybe have some sort of connection to these race. You saw her kind of fleeing like northeasternly across the North Downs, right? Um, Rudauer as a kingdom. So if you like, kind of scroll out. One of the cool things about this map specifically is it actually shows you like the old realms, like the three kingdoms that made up Arnor. And so there's Rudauer, which is basically east of the Weather Hills, um, east of the North Downs, etc. Uh, you've got Cardolan, which is sort of south uh, by the South Downs, um, by the Horowell River there, by Tharbad, etc. And then you've got Arthedain, which is kind of northwestish here by Enuminus and um, and like kind of covering the Shire to some degree, all the way towards the the Grey Havens. And so those are kind of like the three kingdoms, right, that made up Arnor, and then. Well, I should say, Arnor existed, broke apart. I won't get into the full history, but like it broke apart into those three separate kingdoms. And then it was Arkaleb, whose helm uh, Arineal now wears, who tried to kind of reclaim and bring them together at a certain point. So Arthedain and like Cardolan were on board with that, but Rudauer like rejected it. And then you can see up here to the northeast is like the old witch realm of Angmar. So... From what you got from from Hollis Oak Stout, the orcs and the goblins were heading kind of towards. He said, the, specifically, uh, Hollis said they were heading towards like the Etten Moors, which is this this uh, this range of mountains to the northeast near the like kind of on the on the realm of Ang of Angmar there. So yeah, everything's kind of suggesting northward, one way or the other. And what's up there, but Angmar, or at least the gray wastes of Angmar, and et cetera, et cetera. Does that make sense? Does that answer your question? Yes. Yeah. So, so if these rumors are true of the orcs and the hillfolk working together, it's possible they're converging or regrouping. But under under who? Who we need to determine who is uniting these forces? Who is the true power pushing this forward? And that that redheaded woman, we we need more information on her. You just see like Oswald, he's like he can't help but grin as he kind of looks over at at Gilly in like in sort of like a very like kind of pr like a proud Papa type of moment type of thing. You know, it's just like <laughs> doesn't say anything, but just sort of this like silent, you know, silent smile, just grins like knowing grin, like asking the right questions. Of course she is; she would be the one asking the right questions. So. Reniel sort of Good. agrees with that, um, but also recalls how narrowly they escaped. That I would like to make sure that we can bring our lives back with us again after we go out. So I do think we need to gather more information, but I would hope that we don't have another encounter with her until we have a bit more information and how we're going to be successful because we barely made it out with our lives and yours and she'll motion to Talendil. 
on our first encounter. He kind of just gives you like a little, little, little nod. Uh, you know, Balin speaks up and he's like, they, as courage doesn't run in short supply among humans, even in the Braylands here. Yeah. But those who guard your, your streets and your farms are not warriors. I think Arineal has the right of it. Information. What more do we know? How immediate is the threat? And if we can get that information, perhaps we can rally others who are warriors, who are prepared, and can stem this before it becomes more than we can handle. It sounds like we need to scout either Khandum or the Witch Realm and see if their forces have gathered in in large quantities so we can can sound the horn, sound the uh, call our forces together and unite us with actual tangible evidence. Talendil, like you can you can see as he's he's taking a drink as Gilly goes to speak, and as you mentioned, like scout Khandum, he's <clears throat> he almost kind of chokes on it. <clears throat> You've got a stout heart, little hobbit, but that is a very bold plan. Um, bold indeed. So, like, Oswald speaks up the way. I, I see it. There are a few options ahead of us. As this kettle grass here. Yes. If you all feel... Kind of looks over at Talendel, bold. Yes, you can travel to the edge of Angmar. You can confirm the rumors of activity there. You can see if what Talendel's ranger friends have said is true, that lots do glow at night within the old Khan Doom. could also take interest a bit and follow the Etten, off to the Etten Malls to Mount Garm. Graham, I keep doing that. Sorry. Journey into Rudower. You can see what lingers there, perhaps. It's another option for us. North of the Trial Shaws, west of the Horwell, and those dreary foothills south of the Etten Malls. You can Look for some of the old dark castles, strongholds that the hill folk were said to have built. Search them for signs of the old cursed kingdom returning. Or oh, he can devise a plan straight for Angmar itself. You see Talendil kind of speaks up and he says, uh, If I had... Two good legs and two good arms, I would travel with you, but I am not able currently. But I can say that if you do decide the, the route that Miss Kettlegrass has put before you, or you can, uh, you can perhaps find a, uh, a friend, Maribim. It's a trial hunter of sorts, ranger, maybe. She makes camp during non winter months in the shadow of Mount Graham. Perhaps she can give you a better lay of the land, redirect you should you want to go further northward into Angmar itself. I will warn you. The mountain pass are circuitous, ravines are treacherous, tunnels, cold, endless, winding. It's a dangerous place. There are many things that can kill you, and I don't just mean whatever it is that's inhabiting them hills. I mean, it's cold, it's dark, it's treacherous. Go prepare if you decide to go there. 
And then Kelly Daly will kind of like nod as she's like flipping through her notes of like while they were adventuring. And um because and like the whole time she's been taking basically like meeting notes <laughs> while, while we're meeting. <laughs> and, um, okay. uh, and she's like, another option. I've up. I've been reading up on, on warfare. Um if we were to say Rotak would be equivalent to a general of some sort, it could be worth it to strike him down. Uh, Balin speaks, uh, of, of course, uh, yes, uh, from what Miss Briar Cleef's friend has said, they, apparently the Orc Horde was, was heading northward as well. Uh, we've long heard rumors of, uh, of orcs, goblins, trolls within the caves of the Etnmals. It's a, uh, it's not something that we've confirmed, of course, but uh, but it's possible they could be recruiting more, growing his band in some way. With orcs, it's it's all about strength and fierceness. The bigger and stronger and clever you are, the more powerful you are, the more full of you, the more power you have. So it could be he's looking to grow. Recruiting some of the trolls, and by recruiting, that could mean taking them one way or another. Or maybe there's uh, a plan we don't yet know. Uh, Miss Briarcleaf herself witnessed them ally th themselves with the hill folk. And like, and at that point, like Oswald speaks as like, there is precedent for this generations, thousands of years. The ruin of Arno is at is at the hands of the armies of Angmar, filled with orcs and race and goblins and worse things. But also the hill folk of Rudauer who listen to the shadowy whispers of the Witch Realm and allied with them. There's a reason why no one journeys into Rudauer any further. There's a reason why those folk were driven away, or at least said to have been, because they are the two sides of the same coin. They're evil, as much as an orc or a goblin. I'd say that's our easiest target. We chase after the Rotak, as the Etten was. And then we can reach out to Maribim and get more information. Um, and if she's been scouting and if she's seen more, that's more information we can bring back. You uh, you hear Tarendale, uh, uh, Talendale kind of like cough a bit. And he's like, Iridio, please come here. I would get up myself, but it hurts to stand. Uh, and she'll sort of look confused since it's been an open discussion up until yes. this point but yeah um, she'll comply but it sort of and, looks odd and he you see him start to like like dip, like with with difficulty try to like unravel what looks like some kind of necklace he has around some sort of like leather rawhide strap because he's got the one oh, hand that's oh, horribly bandaged uh, no, uh, no, no, no no i've got it don't need help here this is for you and he hands it over and it's you know just a basic you know it's, it's just got a some sort of charm at the end of it you know it's nothing too gaudy very simple rawhide strap and he says uh, he says there's a there's a watchtower the, the ruins of one the largest that you can see on the western slope of Mount Graham Meribem will normally be within Within close proximity, there. Hang that charm off a branch or a stone. You'll know the spot when you see it. And stay, stay close by. Camp, not in the ruins themselves, but nearby. And she will find you. 
thank you for this. I fear we will need all of the help that we can get. And if you could please return it. It was my daughter's. And I... he just kind of like looks back towards the fireplace at that point. Certainly hope that we can. And so she'll fasten it around her neck. He doesn't watch that at all. He just kind of looks off now at his health, a kind of deep, brooding stare into the fireplace. So Arrhenia will turn to Floyd and, and Gilly and say, so we are trying to make contact with an ally or we're trying to follow them and engage in this fight ourselves? Uh... I think two birds, one stone. We reach out to her first, get information that we can, and then see what we can do about Ratak. It's uh, it's Rotag, by the way. Ro like R O T A G. Yeah, it's it's an inside joke of myself. There's not any, and even Melissa has no idea what it's a reference to. It's a reference. Don't worry about it. <laughs> That's what it is. Ooh. What did he say? Melon no, bumbles. Uh, he said Mer Merimben is uh, the western slopes of Mount Garm. There is a watchtower there. Like an old Rudauer watchtower back when it actually served as part of like the forces of good versus the realm of Angmar. Okay, nice. Irenia will, will turn to everyone and, and just ask, you've made it quite clear that any travel through Rudauer is unsafe would you recommend we retrace our steps to fornost and take the west that way or perhaps go to the last bridge and travel up the river and over who'd you ask this to this is this is to who just if any of the sort of elders in the group it seems risky either way if, if they have any wisdom to share otherwise we'll make our own choice um, I think, you know, I mean, Balin will, will, will say, well, uh, my good company here, you, uh, there are decisions you have to make yourselves. There are, obviously, no guarantees you won't be beset by the enemy, no matter which path you take, from what you've said. There are race and more, more evils north by, by Fort Austin and Northern Downs. But we've also seen from Miss Briarcleave and this oak stout fella that perhaps there's a lingering bit of orc and goblin in the weather hills and well, the further east and northeast you go, you you move off into the the dreary hills of Rudauer where perhaps there are Long sleeping hill folk clans that have found an unending courage within them to waken now. It seems there's not a clear path. It's for you to decide and we not being the ones taking that course. I think it is up to the three of you to make that decision. Appreciate your counsel. And at this point, like, um, Elise will speak up. And don't worry, I will. I will speak with Hollis and I will. I will round up a few brave folk. We will keep a close eye on the marshes. It's the least we can do. I don't pretend to have the courage the three of you have, but these these hills are our home, and I will make sure that they are taken care of. And should something unspeakable occur, we will do our best while you are away to repel it. I appreciate that. 
Did we pick up weapons or anything that we didn't need that we could share with them? Like, I feel like I wrote down that we picked up some. Yeah, I don't think that's too difficult. And plus, she's got her, she's got a big old axe. She's a woodcutter. And then she's okay. got her own bow that she uses as well. Okay. So, and you recall Oak Stout actually had weaponry. Like, he was a former Bree Warden. So he, he actually was, like, you know, a warden itself, right? So... You know, the two of them are are capable. And she managed to survive in the Chetwood for, like, 24 hours while being hunted by, like, all by herself by, like, yeah. a band of orcs. So, like, you know she's a pretty hardy folk. Um, so, you never know. Um, and, I, and I would say, like, Gilly, you would know that there are, you know, the bows that are produced just up the road at Archit are some of the best bows that you can you can find. They're, they're you know, outside of, like, something elvish or whatever. Like, they're, amazing, they're, they're fantastic bows. So. Yeah. There's people in the area that are they're capable, but most of what they do is like, you know, they don't fight wars. You know, they, and this isn't, that's not this type of that's not this type of world. Like we don't they don't do wars anymore. Everything's kind of, it's like a dead, you know, there's like these ruins of these these dead old kingdoms here and there, and now there's just the Breelands. It's just a couple towns on the, the graveyard of former great kingdoms. Yeah. Okay. Um, is there anything else that you want to talk about with the council here? Uh, I'm sure I will think of it halfway through next session. Okay. <laughs> but I can't think of anything. Okay. There you go. Long, you got any questions? No, I don't think so. I'd probably just see. I, I know that there was a map that was stolen, but were there any other uh, maps that uh, Breaker might have here? Uh, I mean, he can give you kind of an old sort of generic drawing of where sort of the three kingdoms were and sort of a, a loose definition. But a lot of like, like in terms of borders, it's not as clear, you know, as you might think. But a lot of it's like the borders are drawn by like kind of natural geographical things, like rivers and hills like the weathered hills specifically or the weather hills specifically is what sort of was the old line between Rudauer and like Arthedain and then Cardolan to the south and that's where Argolid passed and that's where Weathertop is and those types of things here and there so you get you get like he, he I mean he's willing he's not going to necessarily give you all like these old mm -hmm. brittle maps that are going to fall apart right if you if you handle them too much um but, but you could perhaps yeah you could perhaps, like, in your, you know, a little book here and there, can kind of draw something. That's fine. Um, Gilly would, because uh, because when we were in um, the ruins, um, she took a lot of like she did a lot of like sketches of things, and like one of them was like the horse rider. She did a sketch of them, and then that like, um, what's it called? Uh once we kind of like in in the dome thing you know what i was talking about yeah like there the, was like art that you yeah 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 i remember you, and, you you sketched out what there was inside the ruins yeah okay. she would kind of like flip to that and be like what can you tell me of 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 this so you you put the the sketch of the of the the figure that you saw atop the horse with the spiked helm and the mm -hmm. like the long kind of pitted blade, the face of shadow, you hear Balin gasp. He's <gasps> Tell me is this the figure you saw in your vision? Yes. He just Oh, oh. Nazgul, that is at least how it's been described to me. I've not seen one myself, but I've had conversations with my kin, with Gandalf, others. Oh, why? I pray this is not the foe. That's pulling the strings of all of these different armies and groups. Oh dear. Oh dear. 
that it seems I... headed woman? She had the same weapon. Yes, I can't speak to that, but it seems I have a task as well. More the three of you. I must find Gandalf and let him know. This is... Oh, goodness. Goodness me. And you can see he like looks generally like concerned. He's got, mm -hmm. you know, he's got this beard. He's got a very clean lip, like his like upper lip, but he's got like one of those like kind of, it's not as long or bushy probably as Floyd's, but like, but you can see he's definitely got like his face has kind of gone a bit hale white at this point. Um, and what else did you have images of? So when we went into the dome place, you know, there was like half a motif and then we went into whatever sort of like echo dream state when i could see the full motif i took a, a moment to copy that down okay um okay oswald uh if you i mean like your your sketches is good how about this how about roll um let's see how good your my sketches your sketches uh so let's do like um i mean i'll take a I mean, I'll take like a craft roll could probably work. Um, yeah, I'd say craft would work. I uh, want to use a... Well, we could do writ wits too. I think a, a wits skill probably makes the most sense. Maybe like a riddle, um, which isn't always just like words, but like we can do something like that maybe too. Yeah. Um, I would like to use a fellowship point yeah. to make it favored. Favored. Absolutely. Yeah, we're coming up to the end here. That makes sense. This was very much a uh -huh. uh, downtime and planning for the next big phase. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm very mm -hmm. excited. We're getting, um, we're heading up there. I love how you guys threw it out there too. I didn't even have to throw it. They're like, let's just go to Angmar. Oh, oh well, okay then. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then can I also use one of our dice that we got? Yeah, we got three, so yeah. we now have two. We have, well, we also, we actually we have, have 15. 15. <laughs> wait oh that's right aaron I'm, oh my goodness yeah. yes the uh gentleman and scholar that is aaron upchurch i got a great success jeff a great success uh yeah you um it's a fairly decent image I, now some of this is, is is most of this is from memory so you didn't necessarily have like like you, you did like quick sketches probably just to kind of get the basic image and then because things were like there was time sensitive during so you only had so much time, time maybe but then during the downtime yeah and so like you hear like a, a whistle kind of comes out and, uh, of like of Oswald's and he's like, that looks. And so if you recall, the the mural was of like a like a immense building kingdom on like what looks like a shore or an island or something like that. It's Numenor of old. Oswald said he just kind of like whispers it almost and Talendale's head just like whips around when at the at the, at the hearing of this you all went into the dome yeah we were we were trying to catch up with you and the redheaded woman before the kingdom of honor was formed I'll spare you a ancient history lesson, but the blood of my kin comes from the island of Numenor, tragic of all tales. It was. It's been lost beneath the sea. But. The goodness there, the. Ability, uh, everything good about this place ran through the blood of those within Arnor, within Arthur Dane and Cardolin, and now through my blood, and even through yours, or any of the helm you now wear might even have been crafted in that place. It's hard to say. Or and an heirloom passed down amongst the most regal and respected of our kind. You just kind of, like, you, you could just see the, it's just, 
sadness is just like overtaking Talendil at this point between like giving away this like keepsake of his daughters now talking about like this ancient kin like where it's just been tragedy after tragedy Numenor Arnor Fornos specifically like all of it down to scattered rangers wandering the north and it's I've just... drawn it enough that it's in my head um, so I think Gilly at that point would rip that page out of her book and, and she would give it to Talendal he takes it and he's just thank you Hobbit it's very very thoughtful of you and he just kind of rests it on his injured leg that he has propped up and he just kind of looks down at it and takes a kind of a quiet sip from his mug okay so I think at this point they've probably given all of the information that you can get unless there's any specific questions that you all were looking to ask okay so we'll say the the council, so to speak, breaks. Everyone wishes you farewell on your journeys. Balin is like out and gone as fast. He stops for a moment to have like a word with Floy and just says, you know, Cousin, rip the belly out of that fat beast for what he's done. To the dwarves that have come before us. Of course. The only way I'll forgive him is with the blade of my axe. Right, that is. Right, that is. And keep an eye out for the little one. She's got a good head on her shoulders. She does. And kinda gives you like a like a, a dwarven sort of big old bro hug and off I go to find a wizard. And he kind of hurries down, hops onto what looks like a pony, and heads off down the road. So I think we'll go ahead and we'll end it there. Uh, and next time we will begin journey phase as we head northeast towards, I think our first stop is, are we, is our first stop going to be um, the slopes of Mount Graham to look for, I, or do you want to go? Hope. Yeah, so like you have some options, yeah. so you can you can specifically set up some things. So like, um, and you can always talk about it in the interim if there's like a more specific place you want to go. Like you can guys literally could just go straight to Khartoum. You could go to the slopes. You could go to like Rudaur. So you have some options here mm -hmm. in terms of like the specific place that you want to go. Um, I would definitely say that we would want to go to the slopes of Mount Graham and okay. have a conversation with her. On the end, okay. I think that would give us like a good chance to like scout out for the orcs and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. uh, that's that's my hope. Yeah. We'll also, I mean, we'll do the whole we'll, we'll, we'll do the whole journey phase. We'll remember, and now we have a long journey. Like this is going to be yeah. a long journey. We're going to chart this yes. out and everything. Um, the other thing, and you can you don't have to do this now. You can do this between this week and next. But one of the things you can do during fellowship phase is you can switch out your useful items as well. So if there are other okay. useful items that you want to want to switch out that you think might be more useful to your to your journey now that you have an idea of where you're going, um, it's going to be these dreary hills, dangerous hills. And then Angmar itself is a very cold place, high in the mountains, treacherous tunnels and ravines and things like that. So those are things you can consider as you figure out your useful items and such. OK, so those are options for you. Um, all right, so uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna finish it up. Uh, why don't we do some closing plugs? Uh, Ashley, what are we playing later tonight? The Darkest House by Monty and where Pimp are Games. we? <laughs> where uh, are we playing it? We're gonna be playing it on um, the Defenders of Kobold. Hmm? Uh, in what? That's gonna be two hours right? exactly. Actually, yeah, right, exactly much two, two hours. hours. Yeah. Uh, thank you for everyone who hung out, by the way. I really appreciate seeing some, so many people. It seems like a lot of people are excited about the One Ring, uh, the, the book. We really appreciate all the attention that, like, it's, it's being shown our, our, our game here. I love it. I hope we're doing it justice. Uh, yeah. So, uh, it's been, it's been a lot of fun. I really, I, I was always very nervous about running a game, like, within such a very beloved and very specific IP, you know, and I don't want to, like, screw it up because I like it, but I'm trying to, trying to do it, I'm trying to do it. It's, it's proper service. 
Uh, other plugs, uh, tomorrow night I'm over on Steam Still Murder playing some Shadowrun. Um, Monday night back on our channel right here, uh, you can find Melissa and I playing uh, Ultraviolet Grasslands with a bunch of our friends. Uh, next Friday will be uh, – actually, wait. There's other things. Wednesday I'll be on Defenders playing a uh, new game. We're playing Old School Essentials, uh, so come on Wednesday for that. Thursday over on Garblag Games, we're punching Nazis and Octung Cthulhu uh, using the, the Modifius 2D20 system. And uh, Friday we'll be back to Impossible Landscapes. And check out our YouTube channel where we just started up Deadlands. Very excited to get into some weird West Cowboy action. So we got a lot of role-playing game stuff going on. Hopefully there's something that we do that you like. Uh, and if you like one show, maybe try it a different show. Do the follow, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so, yeah. Um, I think that's about it. Thank you for those of you who hung out tonight. Thank you for those of you, the new folks. We saw a lot of those uh, those little like Twitch like messages about new folks speaking in the channel. It's great to see some folks uh, coming in. Uh, and uh, we'll be back next week with uh, to begin our journey up until the, the cold mountains of, uh, of Angmar and see what the hell happens to these poor, poor fools who are heading there. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you for those in the in the chat. I appreciate uh, appreciate the kind words. Um, all right, let's uh, let's get out of here. I'm going to go ahead and we'll, we'll put us on the end screen. We'll raid somebody, give you somebody else to watch because there's a lot of people who do really good stuff up here. And uh, that'll be that. So uh, good night, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks, Bye. everybody. Thank you.